fellow reading warriors and welcome back to my channel and yes this background is very different than normal i am back at home with my family i'm not living back in my old room but that's currently where i am at this moment um so before anyone goes crazy about like you're in a pandemic why did you drive 10 hours to go back home i do want to first say um that it was a very hard decision for us to make was to decide whether or not we were going home the only reason well the reason that we did choose to go home was because brennan was able to get all of work off um from the week before thanksgiving all the way until the middle of january and so we are here for more than two months so we've been here for more than two months we got tested before and after we traveled both tests came back negative but then when we got home we wore masks around everyone and we kept our social distance and actually we spent Thanksgiving in a completely different room than the rest of my family in order to keep safety and distance. Um, so I just want to put that out there as like a, I am still taking this seriously. I do, I still kind of feel a little bad about traveling because I know we're not supposed to. Yeah, it's just kind of what happened and so we're going to be here until like I said a little over halfway through January. Um, and then we'll go back to our lonely, isolated apartment. Anyway, now for the point of this video. Also, yes, I am aware that the lighting sucks. I can't do much about it. Um, but I'm making this video because it is a ex super exciting video. And I'm making it at home because it just came out. So, Ariana from The Enchanted Reader tagged me in one of her new original tags that she had just released. And I was like, oh my word, I really want to do this. So I now here I am in a random like room of our house. I don't have very many books with me, um, but I'm going to do this tag. And this tag is the Wonder Book tag. And this is a tag that she created based off of the new Sean Mendes album that recently came out. And so for every song, there will be a question. She tagged me to do it, and I'm so honored that she tagged me. Um, and so I'm really excited to do it. And yeah, so with that, I'm just gonna get right into the video then. So the first book is for the song Wonder, obviously, a book you can't stop thinking about. And the book I chose for this was called We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. And this book I read, oh, forever ago. I think as a freshman in high school, which was five, six, six and a half years ago. Oh geez, six and a half years ago, I was a freshman in high school. Um, and so I read it based off of a recommendation of a classmate who I didn't know very well, but we were in a writing class together and so I trusted her opinion. And it just always was a book that stuck with me because it was the first time for me reading like a non-fantasy book that was not required by school. Because I just did not read a lot of contemporary, I didn't read a lot of realistic fiction, like I just know. Um, so basically there was this, there's this family, and I, like I said, it was six and a half years ago, so it's been a while since I've read it, but it's about this family who goes on vacation over the summer to, like, their family home. Some huge event happened, like, a year or two ago or a couple of years ago, and the main character kind of doesn't remember it or, like, has suppressed the memories or something like that, and so she goes back with family vacation and endures a bunch of family drama to try and figure out or try to remember what happened, what did she do, what did her friends do. There was some about a fire, like, I don't know. I barely remember it and I'm pretty sure the character didn't remember it, so it would be perfect for me to reread the story, especially since I'm pretty sure I like didn't even understand what was going on at the time. It's a book that I always think about because it was such, like, like I said, it was the first non-school required non-fantasy or sci-fi book that I read so it was like a really big deal for me and every time I see it I'm like oh my word that just triggered so many emotions for me I want to read it again and but so I just I'm constant I, I always get drawn back to it and I've never done anything but I, I definitely want to buy it and read it again I just I'm also a little afraid to do so, so. the next song is higher a sequel that was better than the original this is a really good one because I uh, so the sequel I chose for this was Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. It's the second book in the Scythe trilogy. The thing is, is that I always, almost always believe that the first book is always the best book um, in any kind of series, trilogy, duology. I just, I always love the first book because there's so much world building and explaining that has to happen, and that's what I enjoy. I enjoy that creativity. 
Um, but I do think that Thunderhead was a really good sequel, if not better than the first one, because it not only continues on the plot from the first book and it keeps with the characters, it also adds in a bunch of new elements to the story, adds in new characters, and the plot just really takes off in the second one. Um, so while I do believe the first one is obviously necessary to be introduced to the story, I do think the second one is where the major plot of the trilogy does pick up. And like I said, you they mention like the Thunderhead in the first book, but it's not as much of a thing as it is in the second book. So it's almost like a new element that was added without it without it being strictly new. So I really do think that the Thunderhead was probably better than Scythe, if not on the same level at the very least, which is not something I always believe in books. The third one is 24 Hours, a book that you can read in 24 hours, and there are quite a few books that I can read in 24 hours as I've done many a readathons or, um, you know, even 24 hour readathons. Um, so the book I am choosing for this uh, is Once Upon a Time and it's a Disney twisted tale. I believe it is by Liz Braswell. And the thing is, is that I could theoretically say any Twisted Tale book because I feel like all of them are ones that I could read within 24 hours, no matter on like the length. Like some of them are longer than the others, but they're all a very similar, like easy to understand writing. Like, I don't know if it's quite middle grade, but it almost could be just in terms of the style of the writing of both Liz Braswell and Jan Calanetta books. Um, because they are two authors that are taking turns kind of like writing the Twisted Tales. Um, so I'm just saying Once Upon a Dream because that's the one that I did read in 24 hours, but I think that any Disney Twisted Tale would be one that I could if I just sat down and read it. It could happen. Moving on to the next song is Teach Me How to Love, and this is a book with a steamy romance. Now, I do not read a lot of romance. I've said this so many times on my channel. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not a big romance person per se, but I did go with a book for this question and I decided to go with The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This book I read last February when I was attempting to read romance and I chose this one because like, yes, it's steamy, but not necessarily for the sake of being. It's a theme in the book. It's not just events. It's uh, this girl who... Asperger's? It's this girl who is not comfortable with touch and so she has been having a hard time finding a life partner because of the sexual aspect of having a relationship. She has a hard time with people touching her in that way. And so she decides to go out and hire uh, a male escort to um, help her figure it out. And it's so it's steamy, but not in the sake for being steamy like there's a whole story there's like a reason for it and that's like the only reason i would ever want to read a steamy book it's just not my preference it's not my type but like yeah so that's what i chose and this next one is based off the song call my friends and is what is your best friend's favorite book now this is an interesting one because not a lot of my friends read and the ones that do they don't read a lot so i decided to go with brennan who is technically my husband but he really is like my best friend like actually um and the thing is is that he has a very different reading taste than i do and he said it's his favorite is 100 years of solitude he read it for school but it was a project that he could choose and he just he always talks about it he loves it he, he ever since that book he's like i want to read more magical realism and i'm like okay have fun <laughs> i'm good so his favorite book is 100 Years of Solitude, and that is by Gabriela Garcia Marquez. So fun, right? Next one is Dream, a book with a long distance relationship. Now there were two books that I debated on going with for this prompt because one of them is like a romantic relationship and that's Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And I debated on not going with this one because I talk about it so much on my channel because it was the one romance I thoroughly enjoyed. Like I, I loved it completely. And so, like, that's one that would fit the prompt, but I've talked about it so much, so I'm gonna go with another one that fits the prompt, but not quite in the same way. So I decided to go with Snowflower and the Secret Fan, and this is by Lisa C. This book takes place, it's a fictional book of back in ancient China, and so the long-distance relationship is not a romantic relationship, it's a best friend. And so because it's ancient China, women's lives look very different than how they do now and so this girl who never really gets to leave her house you know her duties are to cook 
queen bee, like the woman of the house, um, she gets paired by a matchmaker, not only to a husband, but also to a Lao Tong, her best, a, a best friend. So it's someone who's very similar to her that would get along well with her, and they are set up to be best friends. But she lives in a different city, and then when they both end up getting married off, they continue to live in different cities. And so the book is more so about her friendship with her Lao Tong over the course of both of their lives. So it starts very early when they are going through foot binding, to getting matched with the Lao Tong, to getting matched with the husband, to getting married, to having children. Like, it's an entire lifetime, but it's a very small book. Um, and so that's the one that I really wanted to choose for this prompt because it is a long distance relationship, but not in the way that the prompt they suggest. Sorry. But it's just a book that I want to talk about more because it was, it was so good. Then the next one is Song for No One, a character breakup that destroyed you. I struggled with this one so hard because in most of the books I've read, there haven't really been much of like a breakup. It's always characters getting together. There's never really like a breakup or a long lasting breakup. And so I don't really remember a lot of character breakups and a lot of them did not affect me in the way I think the author intended. So the book I chose for this one is like a, it fits the prompt. But I chose An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Um, the main character is dating a girl. It is a same-sex relationship and she breaks up with her at some point in the book. And I was like, ow, okay. Um, it didn't affect me that much, but it honestly was a book that had a breakup in it. That was like, okay, that was a main thing that happened in the book. Moving on. So, alrighty, then we have Monster your favorite villain oh good question i never have the answer that i want so like when i'm like oh there are so many good villains out there and then i never remember who they are what they are like i'm so bad at remembering villains unless i just read them so there are plenty of really good villains but for this one i chose the house of sultan sorrow and i'm not going to talk too much about the villain just because that is a standalone book it's a 12 dancing princesses retelling um but i think i don't know if it's necessarily a villain per se but just like the cause of the trouble was so cool so creepy i loved it so while there are probably so many other amazing villains and books that i loved would probably fit this prompt better i just can't think of them so i'm going with the ending of house of salt and sorrow by erin e. craig just, just go read it, then you'll understand. 305, An Unexpected Romance Between Characters. Now, the book I've chosen for this takes me back so long ago. Way back when I read the Mortal Instruments series. I know, I never talk about the Mortal Instruments series. And that's because I don't remember majority of the Mortal Instruments series. I read it in middle school. And the other problem is, is that I read the series right as like one of the last books or so was like coming out to complete the first series that Cassandra Clare wrote. And I sat down one week in the summer and I read the entire series over the span of a week. I just sat there and I read that book because you know, it was middle school. I didn't have summer homework and I didn't have anything better to do with my time because what are friends, right? What's a social life? For a middle schooler so i sat down and i read it and i did not predict and if you haven't read the Mo mortal instrument series spoiler mm -hmm. the relationship between alec and magnus i i love it i love that it happened but i just didn't see it coming again i was in middle school so i never saw anything coming um but yeah so forever ago when i read mortal instruments that happened and i was like This is very interesting video. I just, it's so hard filming in this room because it's like echoey and plain because no one is living in this room. But there was also no good spot to film, so I'm just kind of like, eh. The next prompt has always been you, and that is a couple that is endgame slash your fictional ultimate OPT, OTP couple. So like the ultimate couple. Oh my life. And for this one, I chose Jude and Cardin from the Airfolk Trilogy. I know, I know. 
it took me, I was, oh, when I read that trilogy, and I have read all three, and I'm going to try and keep this spoiler free, but when I was reading the books, like, even the first one, the second one, I was like, no, there's no way I'm supporting Jude and Cardin. No, I refuse. I'm not hopping on that boat. Mm -mm. No, I refuse. I refuse. And then all of a sudden, I read The Queen of Nothing, and I was like, oh my gosh, Jude and Cardin. Oh, my heart. It has to happen. It must be. And I just completely flipped my my opinion, just absolutely 180 turnaround, just like, oh, Jude and Cardin? Yes, please. And I haven't even read any of the extra books outside of the trilogy. Well, I've read, I've read one. I read The Lost Sisters, but that was in between books one and two. But I haven't read any of the Airfolk books that are, like, Cardin's background or his stories, reason why he is the way he is. I haven't read those yet, and I want to. But I get the feeling once I read those, I'm going to be even more like, oh, I want Jude and Cardin and... Mm. But, like, for the longest time, I was refusing to hop on that train and now I'm like oh. so then the next prompt is a piece of you a book you would never lend out this one's a hard one because I actually love lending my books out the problem is no one ever wants them <laughs> don't lend my books out to people because no one ever like asks me for them and there have been so many times I'm like you should read this book I have it do you want to borrow it and people are like mm, maybe and then they never do um but I will share a time when I did lend a book to my husband and he destroyed it and I was so mad at him. I got so mad because he dog-eared like every other page, every couple of pages. It was just dog-eared. It was flapped. It was, oh, I got so mad at him for doing that. And so I, I really hate for him to borrow my books, but I also want him to read. So I still let him, but we have now had a talk of how to treat books, especially books that are not your own. Because like, seriously, who takes someone else's book and then just destroys every single corner in the book? Who does that? Seriously, people. So, <laughs> I am perfectly fine with lending out my books to people as long as they know to, like, respect the book. Respect me and my books. But, to choose a book for this prompt, I would probably say Spin the Dawn. Um, just because the copy that I have is a soft cover and I got it on our honeymoon, so it's like special to me. So that's probably a one, why I wouldn't, I'd prefer not to lend it out, but I don't feel very strongly of like, this specific book must never leave my sight, or you know, none of my books can be lent out. It's just, yeah, it's fine. Alrighty, we are almost to the end. We've got Look Up at the Stars, a book set in another planet slash in another world. And for this one, I am choosing Vinti, which is the first book in a trilogy. I read it for my class and I really, I loved it for a couple of reasons. One, it is based off of a different world and it's very creative, but two, it's like a huge commentary um, on society, even though it's like sci-fi. It's really cool because it's about this girl who is from an African tribe and they cover themselves in the red dust of the earth. And she really wants to leave and go to this prestigious academy, but her community is like, uh, no, that's not how we roll. What are you doing? Um, but then she ends up getting accepted into the academy, and so she goes. And she is the only person like her who goes to this academy in space. And it's about her facing, like, keeping her own traditions, facing who is she, like, why is she doing what she's doing? And it's just a really, but then also the commentary of how other people treat her when they see someone who's different than they are. Do they treat her nice? Do they put her down? And it was just, oh. It was a really good book and I think a lot of people should read it. And it's also like very short, so it's really like, there's no excuse for you not to read it. I haven't read the rest of the trilogy for it yet, but I really want to, so yeah. Based on another planet is Binti, but it's based off of our planet. Then the last song slash prompt for this tag is Can't Imagine, a book you can't live without. And this is a really good prompt. Um, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Uh, so the book that I have chosen, it's another first book in a trilogy, and that would actually be Inkheart. I own this book on my Kindle because it's a book that I love to read when traveling um, and it's one of those rare books that I will read over and over again without like being annoyed or hating it. 
And it's, it's, always, it's one of those books that when I'm going through a slump will encourage me to read because the book itself is based off of books and stories. Um, it's about this girl who lives with her dad in Europe and her dad is a book binder, but little does she know that her dad has a special gift. He is a silver tongue, meaning that when he reads aloud, he reads things out of the book. Characters, objects, you know. If he sits there and reads a paragraph about it, it's coming out. However, that also means that something goes in. And so that is exactly how Maggie and her father lost their mother as he accidentally read out a villain of a book when he was reading a story to his family and the wife went in. So sad, so tragic. But that villain that he read out is now causing horror to the world and the and the father has to set things right and so he and some other book characters have to take down this evil and figure out how to send him back into the book considering he has no idea how to target who goes into the book obviously if he knew how to do it his wife wouldn't have gone in the book but, but yeah so i don't think i could live without ink heart it's a book that I listen to with my mom and then it's a book that I take with me everywhere when I travel and I read it all the time so Ta -da. well that was the wonder book tag thank you so much for an enchanted reader for tagging me to do this I had so much fun sitting there and like puzzling over the prompts like oh I have so many good books for this or I, I know absolutely nothing and so it was really fun to come up with this list of books to talk about so I cannot thank her enough for um, tagging me to do this and but with that let me know in the comments below what any of your answers to this tag would be also if you're interested in it um, the original video will be down below as well as a link to Enchanted Reader's channel just in general so you can check out more of her videos because she makes some pretty awesome videos and she's made quite a few tags um, in the last couple of weeks uh, based off of music that was coming out and I think that's just so cool how she is incorporating music in books because sometimes for some people they go hand in hand and for some people they don't and so yeah definitely check her out also feel free to subscribe to my channel if you're new here I will be posting videos every Thursday um, feel free to give this video a thumbs up comment down below anything you want answers to this tag questions explanations your favorite book I don't know Feel free, just go ahead and do what you like. And with that, I will leave you guys wishing you all a happy reading.